Praise be Jesus and Mary. In today's gospel passage from Matthew chapter 18, our Lord speaks about a most important, though delicate, subject matter, namely fraternal correction. If your brother sins against you, go and tell him his fault between you and him alone. If he listens to you, you have won over your brother. Some people consider fraternal correction to be unchristian, you uncharitable. For did not our Lord teach, judge not, and you will not be judged. Condemn not, and you shall not be condemned. Yes, our Lord did teach that we mustn't judge or condemn others. But he also taught, as we heard in today's gospel passage, the need to fraternally correct. And here's the distinction. Judgments condemned by our Lord are either rash, hypocritical, motivated by pride, or made with a presumption to know the very depths of the human heart of the person to be corrected. And that's something that only God can know and carry out, judging a person infallibly and perfectly. Whereas fraternal correction, it does involve judgments too. But not to condemn others, let alone condemn them in their persons as such, but to correct any sinful behavior that might be harmful to them and perhaps to others as well. This is what our Lord meant when he said, do not judge by appearances, but judge with right judgment. Our Lord's teaching on fraternal correction is rooted in the Old Testament. And we can find many examples of fraternal correction in those sacred texts. How God, through his prophets, corrected his own people, the wayward sinner. In today's first reading from Ezekiel chapter 33, God instructs the prophet Ezekiel to be his watchman and warn the wicked of his errors. If you warn the wicked, our Lord says, trying to turn him away from his way, and he refuses to turn from his way, he shall die for his guilt but you shall save yourself. Another example is from the book of Samuel, when the prophet Nathan fraternally corrects King David for having grievously sinned, committing adultery with Bathsheba, the wife of Uriah the Hittite, and for also arranging the death of this man in the line of battle. And thanks to Nathan's correction, David heartfeltly repented and became a model of repentance. I have sinned against the Lord. It was probably King David who wrote in Psalm 141, let a righteous man strike me, it is a kindness. Let him rebuke me, it is oil from my head. The Old Testament teaching on fraternal correction is brought to perfection by our Lord in the Gospels and in the letters of the New Testament. For example, St. Paul writes to the faithful at Thessalonica, if anyone refuses to obey what we say in this letter, do not look on him as an enemy, but warn him as a brother, correct him. Remember how St. Paul fraternally corrected St. Peter, even publicly, you know, for having caved in to the, the Judaizers among the, uh, the converts of the Jews, insisting that the Gentile converts also carry out various mosaic practices and laws. St. James writes in his letter, if anyone among you wanders from the truth and someone brings him back, 
Let him know that whoever brings back a sinner from the error of his way will save his soul from death, and this will cover a multitude of sins. We live in a time in which mercy is rightly given special emphasis by and in the church, for nothing is so desperately needed as the mercy of God. As Christians, we're to share in the distribution of that mercy in various ways, you know, by putting into practice one or another of the, the 14 works of mercy, you know, the corporal and spiritual works of mercy, including among the spiritual works of mercy, admonishing the sinner, also known as fraternal correction. Admittedly, this work of mercy is probably one of the most difficult to put into practice. Why is that so? Perhaps because very few actually welcome it, and most people actually resent it or refuse it. As St. Jose Maria Escriva comments, making a fraternal correction is always hard. Everyone knows this. But making fraternal corrections is the best way you can help others after prayer and good example. It's the best way to help others after prayer and good example. St. Thomas Aquinas teaches that fraternal correction is a spiritual alms deed. That is an act of charity. Since, he reasons, it is directed to the amendment of the sinner. Now to do away with anyone's evil is the same as to procure his good. And to procure a person's good is an act of charity, whereby we wish and do our friend well. Let our corrections always be fraternal when we need to carry out this spiritual work of mercy. Fraternal that is motivated by genuine Christian charity, the good of the other. That fraternal quality makes all the difference. The way we correct. St. Paul reminds us in today's second reading from Romans chapter 13, that the commandments can all be summed up in this saying, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. And he concludes, love does no evil to the neighbor, hence love is the fulfillment of the law. And basically, fraternal correction is an application of what uh, St. Paul's teaching here. You know, the golden rule, do unto others as you'd have them do unto you. Love your neighbor as yourself, You know, for example, if your doctor knew what was ailing you and perhaps threatening your very life, you would appreciate any attempt of his, on his part to correct the problem and bring about healing in your life or perhaps even save your life. If you as a Christian know someone, perhaps a family member or a friend, suffering from some eternal life-threatening spiritual illness, such as some habitual state of mortal sin, wouldn't you want to offer him a much-needed remedy, correction, and thereby help save his soul? No doubt you would. But you might ask, what if this person simply wouldn't want to hear it. My fraternal correction, and rather stubbornly reject it. Well then, our Lord's instructions in today's gospel can be of help. We can recruit others to help us in making this fraternal correction, and if necessary, getting help from the church. We simply do all we can. Pray that our Lord open a door where it might be opportune you know, to speak about these things, to correct 
this loved one. And our door will open the door. In the meanwhile, be patient and pray and make sacrifices insistently and perseveringly for this person and wait for the Lord to act. Let us keep these things in mind and take seriously this Christian duty of offering and receiving fraternal correction. It might very well, well be the one thing that others need most or what we might need most to be corrected fraternally. As Proverbs chapter 10 says, he who winks at a fault causes trouble, but he who frankly reproves promotes peace. A path to life is his who heeds admonition, but he who disregards reproof goes astray. Praise be Jesus and Mary. Now and for